Agnes started Codian with us at the African Science Academy in 2019. But regardless of those challenges, she continued to try, and now she's on the university's research robotics lab. She's making robots for elderly people that will be a companion for them when they're alone. Agnes is using her STEM to impact other people's lives positively. This here is Clarice. She's from Kenya. Clarice is a mechanical engineer. In 2022, she graduated and then got a job with a mechanical engineering firm. Clarice, as a woman in STEM, has told me that she's had to be strong and she's had to be bold. And when she was at ASA, she found that she was able to find herself and know that she was enough. The image that you see is her sitting in a portable toilet, okay, which is being designed, it's a prototype that's being designed for poorer communities. It's easily assemblable, and then um, the waste goes on to make fertilizers. As I said, Africa is rising. We're having women in STEM who are making an impact and doing things. But sometimes people ask, what about the boys? Are we leaving them out of the equation? Well, it's true. We've made progress over the years, and more girls are actually going into STEM courses. But there's a lot of disparity. It's not consistent. On the African continent, we have some of the largest disparities. If I give you the statistics for South Africa, where we are now, it's believed that 13% of STEM graduates are women, and only 7% of engineers are female. Now, those statistics are stark, and we need to do something about it. But why does it matter? What's, what's the big deal? Well, Africa's facing 21st century challenges. And currently, we're like a bird with uneven wings. Unless we make true progress, and unless we strengthen both men and women, we are not going to fly high. We need the holistic development of all of our continents. Agnes and Clarice have excelled, but it's not always been like that. If we had grown up in the time of um, Mary Jackson, Kathleen Johnson, or Dorothy Vaughan, our achievements may not have been discovered till now. Generally, the world has an idea of the great man theory. If you think about great scientists, I'm sure you can name many men. Science is a collective effort. The progress that is made has come from many people. These are hidden figures from NASA. And over, over, over time, women's contributions have been ignored. Another example is Mileva Marik. She was a study partner of Albert Einstein and eventually became his wife. And it's said somewhere that she may well have been the major contributor to that famous theory of relativity. Think about that for a moment. We need to think about humanity as a bird with two wings, males and females. If we are to soar high, both wings need to be strong. If one is weaker, we're not going to. It's all about balance and equality. We want the world to soar high and steady. All of us have biases. I know I can talk about the history of science and blame the people in the past, but even us sitting here today have biases. I'm going to ask you a quick question. If you were buying a toy for a nine-year-old girl, what would you get? If you were buying a toy for a nine-year-old boy, what would you get? Is there a difference? Is there one toy that's encouraging problem-solving and another toy that's encouraging um, caregiving? Think about it. Boys, generally, have had an advantage. Okay, history shows that story. So we've come to a point where we design something called the male default. Whenever things are being designed, it's designed in one size. Male. Here's an example 
of what I'm talking about. This is an engineer on an oil rig, okay, and I hope you're enjoying looking at his overall that's fitting him really, really well. Now, think about that overall carefully. He can put his high-vis on, it's got two zips, so he's fine. What about a woman? What if a woman was wearing that and she wanted to pee? It'd be mission impossible, right? Picture it. Female engineer. She's on the oil rig. The only toilets are outdoor. What does she have to do? High vis off, overalls off, and then what? It's not, but it's not about peeing, and it's not about PPEs. What I want to say is that you can't treat us all the same. We are different. You might have a solution, but you can't give the same solution to both men and women. Africa, on the other hand, is unique. And this is one of the reasons why we can't have the same solutions. African women in STEM have the odds stacked against them. If we think about gender and we think about economic factors, they play a large part. Globally in the world, 122 million girls are out of school. And that's a stark statistic. Some of the factors include poverty and location, and on the African continent, those disparities are, amplif are amplified. Here's an example of Côte d'Ivoire. For every 100 boys that go to school, on average, about 72 girls go to school as well. And that's the average for the country. But if we're thinking carefully about the poorer students who come from economically challenged backgrounds, then the statistics go really low. So now it is, for every 100 young men that go to school, only 22 young women go as well. Now imagine that. If you were all young women in Ivory Coast from deprived backgrounds, count four people around you and yourself. Only one of you would go to school. But that's one example. Let's hone in on, oops, Mozambique. Mozambique is doing a bit better. For every 100 young men that go to school, 73 young women go as well. But then when you start to delve deeper and you look at the statistics, in the rural areas, there are 53 girls going to school for every 100 boys. All of these statistics paint a vast picture. We've got to think about what the data means and what the implications are. If we've gone to good schools and had a good education, we're the lucky ones. I've spent 25 years in STEM education, and in that time, I've seen the number of girls going into it increase, and that is awesome. But we can do more. In 2016, I spearheaded the creation of the African Science Academy. I was the founding head teacher, and our mission was to empower more girls from varied backgrounds. In that time, I met exceptional young ladies. They had brilliance that just needed cultivating and recognition. Every day was different. We traveled to rural parts, and that's a picture of us breaking down. We had a um, breakdown. But then there were also the highs as well, when I was a proud head teacher watching my students collect awards. Agnes, who's in this picture, and Clarice are exceptions, but they do show us what happens when we focus our efforts and we're intentional about what we're doing. They show us what happens when we actively break barriers, and they show us what happens when we strengthen the other wing. Yes, there are challenges, but yes, we can do more. We can do more by supporting programs like this, or programs that are empowering young African women who want to go into STEM. We can check our own biases and check our thinking and see how things are going. We can also have an understanding of where these young women have come from and some of the challenges that they're facing. In the end, the aim is to make it fair. I have a dream. 
I have a dream for Africa's journey in STEM. I see it like a bird with two strong wings flapping away and ready to soar to great heights. Thank you.